Hey everyone, today's video is going to be a vlog and I'm very excited for today's video because I have a lot of exciting, fun, new um, updates and things that I want to tell you guys about that I haven't really gotten around to unless you follow me on social media just because I've been so focused on making more, I guess you could say, traditional style YouTube videos. Because I have so much that I want to talk about, I think I'm going to split today's vlog into two parts just so I don't feel like I have to shortcut anything to make it fit within a certain amount of time. Since we're outside already, look how nice it is out here. I have been waiting for my, like, foresty part of my backyard, or I guess my entire backyard, to kind of bloom out. It is so nice. All the trees and shrubs and everything are coming in very, very nicely. Anyway, let's go inside now so we can continue on with this vlog. There is the chicken coop right behind me. Chicks are doing good, very well. Um, unfortunately, it's not going to be, they're not going to be able to live with the big chickens until September. But, um, or I want to say late August, but the cilantro and basil, more of the cilantro, is coming in great, by the way, on top of the coop. Alright guys, so now that we're inside, firstly, yeah, I know you can hear my turtle filter. Maybe not so much the filter behind me. So if you've been on my channel for a while, you may know that I have a turtle. But he was living with a bunch of goldfish at one point in time. They were feeder goldfish, uh, so obviously he's a turtle, he's gonna want to eat them. I have a whole video on how like I got the fish and everything, which you can find in the card. Let me see if I can get this up here. Anyway, he ended up eating all of those fish, surprise, and he, except one of them. And that fish has been living with him for over a year now. The, long, the more and more time that went by, pretty much, I felt more and more bad for the fish for living with the turtle. And like I said, the more time that passed, the more the fish really became one of my pets. So long story short, Sage attacked the fish, um, again, surprise. This happened, I want to say, about a month ago, but uh, when he attacked the fish, she was in very bad condition. She's a uh, common goldfish, by the way. Pretty much the top of her body was uh, a little bit red in color. Her back tail, like the main one or whatever, was bit. So I knew I had to do something. I moved her out into her own tank um, that same day that that happened because I had spare equipment and everything all on hand. And that is actually what is behind me right now. So I just grab my camera quickly. You guys can see that this is my goldfish's new tank. So I have not shown this in any of my videos recently, but this is a, I believe, 20 gallon tank. It is a sufficient size for her as of now. I know these fish get huge and yada yada yada, they need ponds, whatever some people say they need ponds or just huge tanks. She's in great shape, guys. She made almost a full entire recovery. Obviously, if you look at her tail, you can see that she does still have some um, imperfections in it because it's still growing in but like I said this happened about a month ago and the fact that she was able to get to this point in just over a month is incredible if you guys would have seen her this is her now she's very very pretty I really like the way the tank looks right now I wish it would look more natural that's something I'm kind of working on now but I just kind of used things that I had except I went out and bought some sand for her tank and that PVC pipe she really loves sleeping in that actually Go for moment. Is. As you guys can see, she does have a little mark on her face that is also from Sage. And I'm not sure if that's ever going to go away, but it does not affect her from being able to eat or anything, so I'm not too worried about it. Alright guys, so the next update is that my bearded dragon Athena, which you guys can see very clearly right here. Alright, so here's my bearded dragon Athena. I realized she was not in the uh, frame before, but here she is did lay some more eggs and uh nothing new she has laid a couple clutches of eggs these were infertile and these are actually the eggs that i dissected in i believe my last video depending on when this goes up so if you want to check that out you can also just click the card up here still working on getting a little bit of her weight back that she has lost since she laid her eggs but in general she's doing very very fine she's very healthy but i actually this time was able to catch some footage of her laying the eggs so i will insert that here for you guys
you guys see Leah moving around his little cuddle cup thing? He's moving around in there, he's sleeping there. Alright, so the next update is very, um, also very exciting. It's going to be coming with some changes soon, um, when the babies grow up. But if you don't follow me on Twitter, you would not know. However, my roach, Tina, Madagascar Hissing Cockroach, did have babies. So, again, like I said, I kind of posted this on my Twitter, so if you weren't following me on there, sorry you missed out. But, uh, the funny thing about this whole story is that Tina, my roach, which I have them, her and her, all of her babies, right here. Tina was living alone by herself for at least two months. Um, I don't think I ever mentioned it, or maybe I did, but um, the other roach that I had, Toby, um, her partner, he did die about two months ago, and I was not expecting that they would breed. I didn't think they were gonna breed, and also, like I said, he was dead for a couple months, and I wasn't really aware of how long Madagascar and cockroaches are gravid. So, not gravid, pregnant, um, so, Anyway, on June 12th of this year, 2018, I came home to a surprise. Uh, I was actually cleaning Athena's Detolf, and they live right um, on top of her Detolf next to the heat source. I was going to go clean them, and I saw something small run across the side of the acrylic um, critter keeper. So then I go, and I'm astonished when I see a bunch of babies just running around in the cage. I'm super excited as well, of course, um, because I was actually going to order some new roaches in. But now I don't need to because I have a bunch of babies. So I'm gonna like zoom in on the floor so we can kind of get like a good look at her and her babies. Every time, like since I found them, they all love, the majority of them love to like hide out right there. Here is some of the babies on the side. As you guys can see, they are super tiny, super cute as some may. Um, there are so many of them and I'm so excited for them to like all grow up and everything. So since I just showed you guys that, I'm actually not going to open this up because you guys have a good idea of what the babies look like at this point and since the babies are all in that corner they're gonna like kind of all sprawl and run and everything so I don't want to stress out any of the babies or the mother anyway I'm just going to use my very trusty um, exoterra mister and mist them down because they need to be misted down we go blind if I will make this die could be fake just a blink of a moment Sometimes I don't like to just mist right overhead because I don't want to have to change the food and currently what I'm feeding them is actually this mix that I have been feeding my insects for a very very long time with very high success of course. So currently this is the mix that I feed them. It almost looks like a standard uh, mix or whatever that you can buy from the store. This is loaded with calcium and protein and I actually made a post on my channel, the community section about what you guys would like to, um, or if you guys would like to see this in my shop, because I have used this, this is perfect for, of course, pregnant, nursing, roaches, insects, worms, everything, and like I said, it has a bunch of calcium and protein in it, uh, and I got some good feedback on this on my Instagram as well as in the community section, so if you guys would be interested in uh, having this on my shop, just let me know, I'd be happy to create this. Um, not only is will it be affordable, but it's also a wet or dry use um, powder, so you can use this dry or wet. I usually like to use this dry um, just so that it lasts longer, but since I have nymphs um, and I have a very, very, very shallow water dish in there that kind of evaporates over time anyway, I like to have the food wet so that some of the moisture is able to be absorbed by the roaches through the food. So one last kind of note about the roaches, um, in a couple months when the babies get a little bit bigger, they're obviously not going to be staying like living inside of this critter keeper for obvious reasons because there's going to be a bunch of them and they're going to be fully grown. So I'm going to have a colony and I'm going to be moving them into a 10 gallon. It's going to be very, very nice. Um, I kind of always wanted to do kind of like a bioactive type of tank. So that's what I'm going to be doing for them. I'm going to be using um, a lot of eco earth and leaves and things like of that nature that is very natural for them. Alright, so now onto the next topic. Actually, let me get an animal. Alright, you guys seem to really enjoy when Mason is in my vlogs. I usually do this in every video, but I like to have you guys guess what breed he is. A lot of people guess one thing, and he's actually not, so guess down below. So yesterday I was in Walmart, um, and I was at Petco. 
but in Walmart I actually found a couple of things that I can use for some of my aquariums and tanks. So recently I've been getting a lot more supplies and things to kind of fill, don't knock my turn on over, fill my um, tanks and things out more just to make them look a little bit more interesting. And when I was at Walmart yesterday I found these plants. Um, here are, this is what the first ones look like. They're only 97 cents each so I grabbed one of the, I grabbed all the ones they had and they only had two of this one. These are really nice. And then I just grabbed this one, which is a little bit more um, unique looking. It looks more like a tropical type of plant. It has green leaves with purple on it. I'm thinking I may use this in my Pac-Man Frogs tank, but um, I'm not sure or positive yet. Hey, how you doing? Oh, she just opened her mouth for me. So I also found these freeze-dried treats that I got for a pet. We found these at the dollar store. I will put a picture on screen right here of what the products are exactly. I forgot what brand they are, but they're like 100% natural, they're gluten free, all that type of good stuff. The thing that I did not notice when I first bought them, however, is that they have um, a very small amount of added sugar. I believe the peaches have some added sugar, or the strawberries do, but not the other ones. So the bags are not resealable, but I just put them in the little uh, product bags that I put my items in. But yeah, I just thought these were like really a really nice treat just to offer to my rodents every once in a while. Hi, one more bite all the time, just 